Uh, City Clerk, would you call the roll? Autumn Wilson. Here. Autumn Holmes. Here. Autumn Tendum. Here. Autumn Grover. Here. Autumn Here. Rainey. Here. Autumn Burris. Here. Autumn Fisk. Here. Autumn Braithway. Here. Autumn Wynn. We have a quorum. Welcome to the Monday, December 1st special city council meeting. Uh, first item on the agenda is public comment. Um, given the number of people signed up, you can each have almost three minutes, but not quite. And please, if someone else has said what you're about to say, just say you agree with the other speaker. Um, I'm going to call the first four names, and please don't feel you have to use all of it in three minutes. Michael Tannen, Vashali Patel, Lori Keenan, and Jessica Oldani. Happy get? Go right ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to have uh, the opportunity to address you again tonight about our levy. We have a diverse roster of speakers tonight to talk about the depth and breadth of the services and partnerships EL, Evanston Public Library provides. It is going to be a veritable Evanston Public Library love fest tonight, I hope. The speakers tonight will dispel the innuendos about the library and its board that we do not care about human services, crime, or social services. In the months to come, we will be regularly appearing before you to show you that the goodness and necessity of libraries are self-evident to us as it is to you. Before I begin, however, with my substantive comments, I must uh, make a plea for civility. Last week, seven out of nine of us were here, and we were accused of being out of touch, elitist, unrepresentative, and not caring about the broader social fabric of Evanston. This vitriol and the personal attacks have to stop. A bully pulpit should not be used to bully volunteers for lots of reasons. First, it dampens the volunteer spirit that Evanston is trying so hard to foster. Second, it disrespects our wonderful staff who are working throughout Evanston in outreach and public service. Third, it poisons the culture of philanthropy that Evanston Public Library is trying so hard to promote. Grants and donations are a major supplement to our levy. Anyone familiar with fundraising knows it is best to air those differences privately and not publicly. All of us are available to take your calls or emails at any time. When the nine of us applied to be on the library board, we weren't asked the color of our skin or our socioeconomic status. The only litmus test was our love of, of Evanston and our love of libraries. We passed that test. We were appointed by the mayor and approved by all of you. We are trustees at large. We do not represent any particular ward. We are trustees for all Evanstonians. When an underfunded public library declines, it declines like a cloudy day, slowly and inexorably without a visible moment of sunset. That's what happened to Evanston Public Library for many years before the library fund model was adopted. Slowly but steadily, the funding for the library decreased more and more to the point where the per capita spending for our libraries was far below our peers. The city ran the library, and the library allowed itself to be run by the city. There was no malice there. It just happened. It was only when the imminent uh, closing of two-thirds of our system, that's when the board and the citizens galvanized to adopt the fund model. Mr. Tannen, you're running out of time. The Illinois legislature has recognized that public libraries should not be subject to the yearly vicissitudes of city and ward politics. That's why the law allows a library board to determine our budget, and we are asking you tonight to show support for the great work our staff has done. I'm going to close with a quick story. Last week, Tiffany Rice addressed you with eloquence about the Day J. Coleman Foundation and the wonderful partnership that she has formed with the library. She did so at the exact same moment 
that the grand jury in Ferguson decided not to prosecute the man who killed Michael Brown. The only institution that remained open during that whole time, during all that civil unrest, was the Ferguson Public Library. It was a public square and shelter from the storm. I have given you a packet of materials tonight. I have Mr. Tannen, you really need to I have given you our biographies. I have given you our our uh, strategic plan. Mr. I've given Tannen. you articles about libraries in the modern age, and I have given you the wonderful book. Mr. Tannen, it's Home time for the next speaker. Has, uh, distributed, How Long Will I Cry? Thank you very much for your support. Hello, I'm Vishali Patel. I'm also on the library board. I'm actually going to read a statement written by Tori Foreman, who couldn't be here tonight, and she is another board member. Um, good evening, and I apologize for not being physically present at tonight's meeting. I'm currently dealing with an injured knee and have asked that my comments be read to you. I've been a resident of Edison since 1984. I moved here while a junior at DePaul University and have lived and worked here ever since. Evanston was extremely attractive to me because being of mixed race, I felt comfortable living and working around many other people of mixed races. Evanston is unique in that it embraces its diversity, at least outwardly. Evanston does have its challenges with trying to treat people equally, and this is what I would like to focus on. A few years ago, I was asked by Mayor Tisdale to take over a seat of the library board from a wonderful woman who had recently died from pancreatic ca cancer, Sharon um, Arsenault. Sharon had been appointed by the mayor and had been instrumental in making sure her decisions reflected the interests of all Evanstonians. The mayor also expressed to me that she wanted to make sure the library board was representative of all Evanstonians. During my time on the library board, I have been thoughtful in my decision making and keeping the interests of all when making comments and during the voting processes. My family and I have always been avid users of all three Evanston libraries, as well as the outposts that have been in different locations around the city and the beloved bookmobile. The library has been a place for us to read, participate in story time, study, attend arts and crafts, classes, and holiday parties. All four of my children are avid readers, but more importantly are well-rounded individuals because of the many different services and programs our library offers. The library is not just a warehouse for books, it's a place to meet, learn, and grow. On a more serious note, libraries across the country, including ours, are increasingly becoming more of a social service organization. When I go to any of our libraries, I see many homeless, disabled, and displaced people who unfortunately need the library as a place to go during the day. Our libraries are the only free and open spaces that people can go to on a regular basis. Just imagine our town without the library. The library is seen as a safe haven, the community gathering space, a public square, and the place you go to find information that isn't readily available or shared. Personally, in my own family, I have a brother who is disabled. He recently moved back to Evanston from another state, and our public library has been the place for him to go during the day to help him get his life back together. He goes there every single day to use the computers, look for a job, do research, and to have a place where people are knowledgeable and open and ready to help him. He loves the library and even asked me recently if I thought if I thought it would be a good idea for him to volunteer there. He and many other of our displaced and disadvantaged citizens depend on the library and its services. We do have many social service organizations in Evanston, but unfortunately most of them have conditions, caveats, limitations, and aren't the first place someone will go for help. I ask you to take the time out of your busy lives to go to one of our libraries and spend a few hours there, attend a lecture or program, or just sit in the lobby and watch the people coming and going. Your eyes may be opened, and you may rethink the importance of public services that the Evanston Public Library provides. Thank you. I have 30 more seconds, maybe? You have about five seconds. <laughs> I just want to say that I also, myself, definitely feel like as a group, we have definitely deliberated and made a very thoughtful process in terms of all of our budget negotiations. And we are a group that does represent and do keep in mind the whole spectrum, especially when it comes to diversity and socioeconomic diversity. Thank you. Three minutes, please, Lori. My name is Lori Keenan. I'm co-president of the Evanston Public Library Friends and also a board member of the DJ Coleman Foundation. I'm speaking tonight to ask your support for libraries requested levy but also as a community member who's concerned about the behavior of certain aldermen at two public meetings last week. It's prejudice when we presume to know something about someone by the car they drive, the clothes they wear, or the address where they live. To do so is to judge. 
Just because I live in the seventh ward doesn't mean I have an easy time paying my bills or taxes or that I haven't had my water service cut off any more than assuming someone in the fifth or second or first or any of the other wards has. When aldermen question the motives and intent of the library board based on where they live, even after they've been assured by our mayor that her selections were deliberately diverse, I find that insulting to a volunteer board, divisive to the community, and it borders on class baiting. The library board's requested levy represents a modest and necessary increase for the reasons that Michael Tannen stated earlier. It works out to roughly $25 increase on the median priced home in Evanston, $25, or just over $2 a month. One of the Evanston Public Library Friends members emailed Alderman Burris asking why she didn't support the levy. She replied that the increase is becoming, quote, a substantial burden for many property owners and, quote, hurts the most vulnerable in our community. I believe the most vulnerable in our community are the children, more specifically one child, an unarmed 14-year-old boy whose mother spoke to you last week, how she unexpectedly found her strongest ally in the Evanston Public Library after her son was shot and killed in Evanston on his way home from a party. She made herself vulnerable in coming here to speak to you too on support of the levy and the real impact the library had made for the DJ Coleman Foundation organization and the standing room only crowd of teenagers who attended the dramatic reading of How Long Will I Cry or picked up one of the more than 500 copies of the book which were distributed throughout Evanston this past summer. Multiple studies have shown that for every dollar invested in the library, $7 comes back to the community. That's economic development. I don't know that similar studies exist about spending for awnings or patios for private businesses. Evanston Public Library Friends just received a check from the Central Street Merchants for more than $700. That figure represents a small percentage of the sales on Central Street on one Saturday when shoppers could choose among eight not-for-profit organizations that a portion of their dollars would support. These are real dollars and are driven by the North Branch on Central Street, by CAMS at Maine and Chicago, and by the Maine Branch downtown. The library has been underfunded for years. Last week, Alderman Rainey said it was, quote, irresponsible not to sit down with the library board and discuss the budget. I hope she's done so since then, since she asked for a postponement of the vote until tonight. Lady Bird Johnson said, perhaps no place in any community is so totally democratic as the town library. Ms. Cannon, you have to wrap up. The only entrance is interest. As Mr. Tannen noted earlier, the Ferguson Public Library stayed open last week in the face of all the rioting and the, and the uh, announcement of the verdict. They posted a sign that read, during difficult times, the library is a quiet oasis. Donations poured in, and one of the Ferguson board members stated, the goodness of people far outweighs the hate. I hope the same is true in Evanston. Thank you. Would you please stick to three minutes, folks? Hello, everyone. My name is Jessica Oldani. I have a local law practice here in Evanston called Oldani Entrepreneurial Law, where I represent entrepreneurs and small businesses. And I am here to speak on behalf of the library's joint efforts with the city through Next Chapter Evanston. So I and other professionals Local business owners have provided informational workshops for small business owners or potential small business owners through Next Chapter Evanston where people are invited to attend and learn about forming and running a small business and what that would be like and what they need to know. We've had great response from those events where the people who have attended have found the information very helpful and important to them, but so far, very few people even know that the events exist or that they have the opportunity to come and <clears throat> excuse me and hear this information. There's a very limited ability of the libraries and the cities, it appears, to get the word out and to do more. And I can tell you from my own practice that I serve many people who are starting small businesses with very limited resources, people who are trying to do their own thing because they have been locked out of other opportunities in the economy, people who have had to start their own small business because they've been unable to retire like they have planned, and the library's 
provision of information is very, very important to people who are trying to do this thing on their own and navigate this market as a whole new world. But I can also tell you that the people that I've just described are really just the tip of the iceberg. I recently came from a cross-generational boot camp held by NABO, the National Association of Women Business Owners, at which I heard one of the speakers attest to the fact that 80% of millennials, so those of the generation age 30 and under, intend to be entrepreneurial. 80% to me in my practice is like a seismic shift in the economy, like batten down the hatches. Everybody in the economy intends to be working for themselves, which is really enormous and indicates to me that if the library in the city <coughs> intend to be business friendly and relevant, then the provision of small business resources becomes just that much more important going forward. So I hope that you will consider that next chapter Evanston is doing that and could do a lot more and could use your help. Thanks very much. Thank you. Uh, the next four speakers are Michelle Hay, Kristen James, David Marcel, and Andy Drelick. Good evening, Council, Mayor, uh, City Manager. Um, you all may know me um, as a vocal advocate for Brummel Park, which is a small community in Southeast Evanston. Um, where we have a very, very high rate of low-income residents who do not have the opportunities that everyone else in Evanston enjoys. I have been a vocal advocate for library services in my community. Um, I've been to any number of uh, library board meetings. I have met, I've been um, privileged to meet with um, board members separately and uh, Karen Danzig lyons have, has spent uh, quite a bit of time talking to me about how we can better serve my community and the people who need free services and access to educational resources that the library will provide. We, for years, have been ignored by the library in our little corner. Um, and that has been a source of huge frustration for me because I view the library as one of the ways out of poverty. But now we have support for this uh, program, which is one of the pieces of this budget, that offers early childhood education to all children in all schools in Evanston, including Oakton School, Washington School, and shoot, the, the Title I schools that are in south, the southern end of town who don't have access to a library branch or the main branch of the library. In addition, um, one of the projects that um, Ms. Danzig Lyons and I were working on was um, marketing of the library to my community for the services that the library offers in things like um, job search, job training, and skills that uh, adults may need. Um, I, I, I find it interesting that there is opposition to an increase in the library budget when Finally, it seems like some of that money is coming to my community. It feels to me like when there is a branch on the north side of town, the, all of Evanston rallies to support it, but when money's coming to Brummel Park, then it seems like it's not the same response. So I would like the services that I'm paying for in my part of town, and some of that's line items in this particular budget. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kristen James, and I'm the PTA Council President, which means I have the honor of working with parent groups across all 17 uh, District 65 schools and the high school. I am also a parent at Da Shoot in the high school. And one of the greatest rewards of my time as PTA Council has been working with the Evanston Public Library. They have been phenomenal in supporting uh, education and building community. They are seen as an advocate, a resource, and a support to our school librarians and our parent groups. And this is an opportune time to support our public library. 
I'm sure you're aware of the recent um, joint literacy grant by District 65 and 202 and the collective impact, the Cradle to Career initiative, where we are mobilizing our assets, public library, number one, and mobilizing our assets and making a difference in the youth in our Evanston community. Now is the time to support the public library and being a part of this initiative. I'm sure you're aware of some of the programs that the library supports in our schools. The K-LEAP program, which is play-based, where it outreaches to all of our kindergartners in developing literacy skills and social engagement. And every kindergartner in the Evanston community visits the library and is given a library card. And recently, the library has been partnering with the YOU and bringing library services to our middle schools, in particular our shoot school, and making sure that our teens are supported as well. The LOFT, the STEM program, FUSE, our science programs, all outreaching to the youth in our Evanston community. I'm sure you're also aware of our bilingual outreach and the recent award of the Heart of the Moon Award for our REACH, outreach to our Spanish-speaking community. As a TWE parent, I've had numerous parents, Spanish-speaking parents approach me recently about what a great resource our library is. And without the library support, they wouldn't be able to negotiate what they need to do to parent their children and to be mentors and role model to their children in the Evanston community. And I'm sure you're aware of recently our partnership in navigating diversity and raising our children here in Evanston. Over four, over three nights, we had over 400 participants come to the public library in a program that we're sponsoring called Navigating Diversity and Inclusion in Our Children. Over 400 participants. And we had over 30 children sign up for childcare in those evenings. This is a central location, a location that is safe for all of our parents and our children in the Evanston community. They also recently sponsored a special education resource fair where nearly 20 community agencies came together to talk about the services in our community for our children who have special needs. Mrs. And James, I need you to wrap up. Thank you. So I urge you tonight to consider the importance of having a strong library in our school communities and a presence in our Evanston community. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, members of the City Council, City staff. My name is David Martz, so I'm wearing two hats here tonight. I'm a longtime Evanston resident, 23 years, kids through District 65, 202, one at college, one about to go, and my wife and I are both longtime supporters of the library, but that's the hat that I'm, I'm not wearing tonight. I'm wearing the hat as uh, the CEO of the Center for Economic Progress. Uh, we are an organization in uh, Chicago, but with uh, presence in 23 communities around Chicago and the suburbs, and we help low-income working families move from financial uncertainty towards financial security. And how might you ask, do we do that? We do that by mobilizing a thousand volunteers from all walks of life to help people deal with everything from their finances to doing preparing tax returns, to start up businesses, to dealing with complex legal issues. And we have found a willing partner here at the Evanston Public Library where two years ago we had initiated our free tax preparation program in partnership with the YWCA in a pilot, but quickly outgrew very limited space they had. And working actually with Alderman Braithwaite, uh, with uh, then Assistant City Manager Joe McRae, we scouted out a number of locations to bring our services, and we found a willing suitor uh, in the public library. So let me demonstrate to you, just in some raw numbers, what kind of impact this has. Uh, we serve 25,000 low-income working families every year throughout Metro Chicago. The median household income of those people we serve is 16,000. Um, we generate, we prepared 18,000 tax returns last year, 32 million in refunds brought back. Uh, before we came to Evanston, we had already been preparing tax returns for Evanston residents uh, in conjunction with our community tax center at Truman College. We'd served uh, in 2012, 102 Evanston residents. Uh, the year that we brought our services into Evanston with the YWCA, we increased to 168 in total served. Last year, when we began a full-service site in the library, uh, in the space also uh, housing uh, the National ABLE Network, we increased the number of people served to uh, 405. 405 households, uh, and we generated $415,970 
in the pockets of low-income Evanston families who would otherwise had to pay hundreds of dollars to, and I won't name our competitors, uh, but they have shot, set up shop around Dempster and Dodge and various other locations in Evanston, and they charge a pretty penny to get taxes done. So how do we do this? We do this with 33 active volunteers, uh, all of them from Evanston. Uh, we intend to grow this number this year. Our goals actually are to increase the number of people served to 460. We intend to recruit uh, easily 45 to 50 volunteers. Uh, we have generated support from the Evanston Community Foundation, the United Way for these services, and we've also dipped into our own pockets and taken considerable risk uh, that state of Illinois dollars will not be forthcoming in the coming year or may be cut. Uh, and we intend to uh, offer uh, services two weeknights and Saturdays. Uh, and not one city dollar has gone into these services, all of it in kind through the public library, which is providing the space in order for us to, uh, to bring these services. So I'm not going to weigh into the politics of what has gone on in the past, but I would venture to say just in terms of the numbers I have, and I'm glad to share much more, that this is a vital service, that there are many families, and I can guarantee you many more in Evanston who would benefit if we could grow this service. I need uh, you to wrap up. And that the dollars actually are finding their way directly into the pockets of Evanston families, all of whom are significantly below the poverty line. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Mayor Tisdall. Alderman Ray. Just, uh, would you not leave the podium? I have one quick question. Sure. Uh, you know, you should give us a proposal. I'd like to help fund you. Okay. <laughs> but, sure. What does it cost the Evanston Library for you to provide your service at our library? Other than sp sp maybe you get free space rental. What, what else does it cost? Well, it's, you would have to ask uh, Karen Danzig Lyons, but it is in-kind space. Uh, it would otherwise be heated. Electricity would be used. It's in the space that is otherwise occupied by National Able Network <coughs> and hours that they're not there. So there is, I think, very little quantifiable space. It's just an effective use of existing space. Right. And, yeah. and boy, do we support that. Thanks right. so Thank much. you, Alderman. Madam Mayor, members of City Council, City Clerk, and City Manager, good evening. My name is Andy Drillick. I'm Vice President of Workforce Services at National Able Network. We provide workforce services at the library and we've been renting space since December of 2011. The library is a vital resource for adult job seekers. Many of our clients do not have access to computers or the internet. Patrons are welcome to use the computers in the resource center, which is located on the third floor. Some choose to take advantage of the Workforce Investment Act funds that provide training and job search assistance. Our staff provide one-on-one -on -one assistance with job search, resumes, and completing online applications. In addition, we offer over a dozen free job readiness training classes that um, range in topics from developing a job search plan to intro to social media. We have a career coach and a trainer that are bilingual, English, and Spanish to offer services. We are also partnering with the YWCA to offer financial literacy classes such as understanding credit and managing your finances with reduced income. These classes are also offered in English and in Spanish. In November, we partnered with the Housing Authority of Cook County to host a hiring event at the library. We provided resume assistance and mock interviews prior to the live interviews with a hiring agent. They're hiring construction workers for the new housing facilities in Evanston, and those hired will get a union card. The Housing Authority residents in Evanston are getting first priority. Um, in our center, we also offer basic computer classes. And according to our instructor, over 90% of the students struggle with reading comprehension and do not understand on-screen instruction and lack skills to write a business letter. We're available to provide that assistance to them. All of our clients are unemployed and underemployed. And over 50% are receiving unemployment benefits. 94% of our clients in the Title I-A program are considered low income based on federal poverty guidelines. Of those, 71% are receiving food stamps or TANF. In 2003, over 4,100 clients used multiple services offered in the resource room. Of those clients, 289 received intensive WIA services. 72% of the low income clients entered employment with an average wage of $23,000 a year. Our dislocated workers entered employment in an average wage of $45,000 a year. Additional funding would make a dramatic improvement in the services offered at the library. The services that National ABLE provides, the residents of Evanston can truly change their lives and the lives of their family. Your support 
of the Evanston Library and our partnership will allow us to continue this important work in 2015. Thank you. Thank you. The next four speakers are Junad Risky, Roland Burris, Rainer Humer, Scott Schiff. and I'm going to give it my turn out of, of day to, to this lady right here because I have to be somewhere before my turn will come. Thank you. Uh, All right. To Dad Risky, um, one of the speakers who came up here said uh, people on the north side of town may not support people on the south side of town and the need for a library. Um, Frankly, I, I've been here for 30 years and come to these meetings for quite some time talking about the budget and the misuse of our tax dollars. Um, I support <coughs> good uses of our money. I, I realize there's a new thing coming down on Howard Street. We want to build a police, we're going to move the police outpost, basically sell, probably either sell the building or lease it out to somebody, a city-owned facility in good condition. Well, I think we ought to open up a branch library there, frankly. We're going to move the police down the street and lease the building. You know, the, the speaker from South Evanston asked for a library. It's not down there. Why are we taking a public building on Howard Street, turning it into a coffee shop with taxpayer money, and we, we could open up a branch library? This is a kind of misuse of our tax dollars. If some of you recall, I was going down Howard Street and saw them building a patio with city workers. This is what's going on here with our money. And we have, you know, the library is asking for an 11% increase. Well, we've had a 44% increase in our water bills over the last five years. That's four times. But nobody on the council has any interest in asking what's going on at the water department, which I've been asking about for over a year now. And I'm going to keep on asking about it. So, f frankly, you know, the, the people that have been insulted from the library, just like, you know, and, and people saying at the last meeting, there's some people like me who, they didn't say me, of course, coming up here at every meeting and ask raising questions and, and, and hurt, you know, saying hurting staff's feelings because I'm asking questions possibly, is, is pretty interesting. Um, it's really the misuse of our money here that, that's at issue. And I mean, frankly, the council telling, you know, the library board and other people they're doing bad things. Well, what, you know, building, a, you know, putting a coffee shop in, in, a, in a good public building that possibly could be turned into a branch library for the poor or the people more needy in South Evanston was a good thing. Is a coffee shop better? I don't think so. Thank you. Yeah. Don't categorize part of this town. Oh, Thank you. Good evening. My name is Rolanda Burris, and I come as a patron for the library. Um, the one I'll be speaking most on is the one on Central Street, um, and I'll be using about three resources for a few minutes, one being their references and resources, the other their atmosphere, and then next their community. Uh, first and foremost, I would like for you to know that they are the heart of our community, and they provide services for a lot of patrons. I mean, you can walk in the library at any given time, and you just see people going in and coming out. In terms of the resources, they offer a wide range, as most of you may know, um, and they provide excellent services. One for me, I requested material for PowerPoint and Excel. Now, not only did they give me the resources, but they referred me to Jessica Jolly's course on PowerPoint and um, Excel and Microsoft Word. And I can't tell you how much of a blessing that was to be actually able to have all hands-on training. And where did that come from? A library. Um, in terms of the atmosphere, let me say that uh, it's a safe and warm environment. And our one on Central Street, if you've been there, um, it provides a reading area, uh, Wi-Fi, but what I enjoy even more is they have a section for parents and children, and that's so awesome to have that in a library where the parents can bring their children, they have all educational needs and, and goals, or just even um, activities for them to use at the library. And then community, they are a part of our community. I mean, as I shared earlier, they have a large number of patrons that come in, uh, in and out of their services. And one in particular, uh, the 4th of July Parade. 
I was there with my brother and my two nephews. So the parade had a, the, the library had their, their um, float, I'll say. And so I'm waving at the libraries and they knew me by my name. They were like, hi, Rolanda. I mean, your library, okay, how much can that mean? So my brother and my nephews were just like, wow, you mean the librarians know your name? And so my brother, who cannot wait to go tell my parents, you know, the library uh, staff actually knew Rolanda in the 4th of July parade. So then my mom, she wouldn't tell several other people's too. <laughs> So to make it short, please, we need to keep this library. It needs its funding. I mean, especially today, as you heard all the other speakers, it's a safe environment. It's not just a safe, but it's a place where our young people can learn. And being in higher education for as many years as I have, helping students to, uh, to uh, okay, you get me nervous, to help students survive academically. I mean, that's my job. And to be able to be a part of that and then to see the, res uh, the library being such a helpful resource in that venture, I just have to stand before it and ask that you please consider our increase for the library. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, manager and council members. My name is Weiner Humer, and as an Evanston resident as a, and as a dad, I'm aware as you are of many of the wonderful services the library provides tonight. However, as uh, the director of the uh, crisis and community support program and the partnership that we have formed with the city of Evanston since 2013, I want to draw your attention to many of the community support services that the library directly and indirectly provides to some of the most vulnerable and isolated members of the community. In 2013, at the very beginning of our partnership, we were invited to do a de-escalation, crisis de-escalation and communication training at the library for the staff. <coughs> And many of the staff and the director afterwards asked us if we could somehow be a more permanent presence at the library, whereupon we agreed to place some of our interns at the library for a few hours each day that are supervised by licensed clinical social workers. And many of the library staff through linkage to our social workers have provided linkage now to homelessness shelters, um, to housing, to primary care, to mental health, psychiatric care if indicated, and to our community support program and visits from licensed social workers into the, the community uh, to some, again, of the most isolated and vulnerable uh, members of the community. So I would urge you um, to support the director of the library, the staff of the library, and the diverse patrons of the library to the very best of your ability. Thank you. Thank you. John, are you? Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't hear who I was to follow. My name is Joan Hickman. I'm a native Evanstonian, and I know the library's history very well. I know the library's history in relation to the African American community as well as to the community in general. Uh, the library went through a rough patch there as far as servicing the African American community, but th I, they, have, they have mended their ways. So my attitude toward the library has changed in recent years. I have been going to the library all my life and, 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 and benefiting from it, but I also realized there were a number of people from the community that weren't going. And uh, I would ask them why and, and got various answers. Mainly it was uh, really didn't feel welcoming. And I also do run into that problem sometimes at the main library when I get ready to check out. And there's one lady that uh, whenever I approach her, she walks away and goes on a break. 
but I, I'll take care of that issue <laughs> on, on my own. Uh, in recent years, and I'll say especially in the last uh, 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 close to 10 years, um, we have a uh, uh, black genealogy group that meets at the uh, Levy Center. And we took our group to the our library and got Leslie Williams to help our, us learn, uh, our members learn how to uh, search. And uh, we, it, we benefited from that because we turned around and, and went back to the Levy Center. And one hour we uh, uh, discussed history, the second hour we used the uh, the, the uh, computers based on what we learned at the library. Uh, last year, I uh, got kind of fed up, and I'm known for saying what I feel. Uh, there were so many people in February trying to get the same few people in February to talk about black history. And I said, but you know, we're black 12 months a year, not one month a year. And you cannot get us all in one month. You need to do something about it. Well, Leslie heard me. And every month, she has two and three meetings with, well, well uh, okay, there's uh, August Wilson Play Reading Group, we meet every month, and we discuss the plays that we have read. There's a... Uh, Joan, I apologize, but I need you to wrap up. Okay, okay. And I anyway, she has had some history, two or three kinds of black history going on in the library every month. And the other thing is uh, Connie Hannigan. And these two ladies, Leslie and Connie, I recommend they get a raise out of whatever you're going to give them, because uh, they, they deserve it. They they really and truly deserve it. Connie comes to the the, the uh, seniors. I, I am Connie comes to the Foster to Fleetwood Jordan to the Foster Senior Citizens uh, meeting and brings library books, uh, DVDs, and everything, and the seniors love it, and they love Connie. And I'm serious about giving Connie especially a raise. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, but the next three speakers only have two minutes. We are running over time, and we have another council meeting, and we won't have any time for the council discussion if we don't hurry up. Diana Allen, Antonietta Diaz, and Richard Kuntz. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Diana Allen. I'm the Assistant ESL Program Manager at Oakton Community College. Oakton's Alliance for Lifelong Learning has been administering the adult and community education program for Evanston since July 2007. Uh, one of our most successful sites and our largest Evanston site is Evanston Public Library where we offer English, free English as a second language classes two days a week. The classes are held on Tuesdays and Fridays from 9.45 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on a year-round basis, fall, spring, and summer. A unique feature of this site is that it's almost entirely volunteer-based. A lead teacher tests students and places them in one of six levels, basic to advanced, the groups are led by trained volunteers who plan and conduct lessons with assistance from the lead teacher. The lessons include instruction and practice in listening, speaking, reading, and writing skills to prepare immigrants to enter the workforce. Students and volunteers learn about each other's cultures and traditions as well. Currently, there are 14 volunteers working at the library many from Evanston and others from various nearby suburbs in Chicago. The volunteers are part of Oakton's VITA uh, program, which is Volunteers in Teaching Adults. Uh, the current enrollment at Evanston Library is 88 students, 
who come from China, Japan, Korea, Mexico, and other Latin American countries, various European countries, and the Middle East. Most of them live in Evanston. We at Oakton would like to thank the Evanston Library for giving us the space to offer this great service to the Evanston community. And we look forward to continuing this relationship in the future. Thank you for letting me speak to you t this evening. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Antonieta Diaz, and I'm a resident of Evanston, but I'm here as a service provider to express my support to the library. I work for Connections, and last year we received a grant from the state of Illinois to implement the Affordable Care Act. And since then, since uh, 2013, we have been serving the residents and helping them to access the application, the system, and enroll in health insurance. So uh, we serve individuals from all walks of life, uh, self-employed, others that have um, retired from one job but they are not um, at the age of uh, seeking uh, retirement benefits yet, so they need to access their own health insurance. The bottom line is that we are also receiving a lot of um, individuals that are coming from surrounding communities, Skokie, Niles, some uh, from Chicago, because they know that the services has been, are being provided at the library. We have uh, been very, very uh, uh, well received. We have evening and weekend hours, and also at the South Branch, they're opening the library on Thursday evenings just for us, so the individuals who come after work, they can access the services. So we are here to support what they are doing and to recommend that the services that they provide expand. Um, as you know, the Affordable Care Act is very, very important. It's a, a basic uh, benefits for all the individuals. So we have received the support that I, I believe me, not other uh, agencies have received. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Madam Mayor and Council Members, uh, my name is Richard Kuntz. I've lived and owned property in Evanston for 12 years. Um, I don't like paying property taxes any more than the next guy, uh, but I was appalled uh, to learn that there are aldermen who don't support proper funding of the library. Um, if you compare, the library board did a breakout which pretty much put Evanston in last place among the suburbs in per capita support for the library. Uh, if you look at our neighbor Skokie, which is not a wealthier community than Evanston, it, it looks like their library is about 50% bigger than ours. So um, I think that the, I've been inspired by, I use the library a lot myself, but I've been inspired by what I've heard tonight about the various communities that benefit from the library. And I think in terms of, the, in keeping with Evanston's values, uh, library support should be near the top. It, it hasn't been, and it should be. The proposed levy is a, strikes uh, me as, as a bare minimum of what we need, uh, so I would urge your support. Uh, thank you. That concludes public comment. Yes? Uh, if it's very brief, we have another meeting starting at 7.30. We... I understand. I'll keep brief. Um, actually, I have, I have a question. Uh, <coughs> It's not clear to me why we're having this discussion about the library. Um, if you could explain under the state statutes, I, I looked and I had, haven't seen that there's any authority that for this council to approve or disapprove since you gave the power of levying in 2012 to the library board. Uh, so if you can point that out, I would appreciate uh, it. We're uh, not going to have a back and forth discussion I, I just, for public comments if you... I'm, I'm making a comment. Okay, thank you. Uh, because also in your, uh, in your own city code, uh, there's no mention of this, and in the memorandum of understanding of 2014, there's nothing about uh, uh, that city council needs to. We to can have our support. attorney go over it with you later. That'd be great. And my second uh, issue is um, uh, it's unfortunate, I, 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 as a point of decorum, I would think. Uh, that the library board member should have a separate um, presentation to give to you and not take away from citizens' time 
in order to, to make list citizens give their presentations. Um, they should have been given separate time. So thank you. Thank you. That concludes citizen comment. Would anyone like to discuss the library ordinance or make a motion? Alderman Burris. Not surprising, I have several comments. I want to first address your comment, sir. There is a, a state limit statute. What the library board has asked for is to use the city council's um, home rule authority to go above that amount, approximately 600,000. That's, I think, the major part of the discussion where many of the aldermen, the state statute limit, fine. It's going above is where I think there's been the issue. So that's, just want to respond to you on that. Um, I also, I'm thankful for this, um, the biographies that were given, so it, it helps me out with a couple of my comments. So, again, I want to be really clear. My comments are direct and clear that I believe that the library board is only concerned with the library and not taking into deliberations how the increase um, in taxes affects all other Evanstonians. I stand by my comments, and I have not seen anything that has changed that at all. So the, the list here of what the background on the people at the library. So you have eight members of the library board, and I counted 18 degrees divided by eight, so about 2.25 degrees per library board member. So wow, a great educated group. That is amazing. Thank you for sharing that with me. And then um, I looked at the Bureau of Labor uh, statistics. So if you earn a high school diploma over a lifetime, you earn about $1.2 million. A bachelor's degree, you earn about $2.1 million. And a master's, you, you earn about $2.5 million. And if you have a professional degree, like I know at least one of the library board members has, it's $4.4 million over a lifetime. That is a huge discrepancy in a, amount of money earned. Also, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reports that people with master's degree or above are less likely to be out of work at a substantial difference between high school diploma and master's degree. Thus, I can completely imagine that in the deliberations with the library board, and even maybe the people that come to the library board, think that $25 or $40 or $100 annual increase may not seem like a lot of money for those with a master's degree or a professional degree. For most of us here on council, it probably doesn't seem like a lot of money either. But people that have a high school diploma or less, and we see people in the audience smirking, I don't think it's funny that people with high school diplomas and less can't make a living, can't live here, can't make ends meet. That extra money is really hard for them. It's a financial burden. Maybe many of you don't understand that, but I do understand that. Maybe you wouldn't understand your Quiet, opinion. please. Um, the also, the comparison of cities funding per capita for library. The interesting part of what wasn't included in that comparison, and one gentleman mentioned Skokie, we aren't the same as Skokie. The Skokie has a lot more money than we do. Not per household, but on the city budget. Their taxes are lower than ours, and they have substantial amount of money from the, the mall. But if we're comparing cities, we have to look at funding for social services. So look at those cities. How much are they funding social services out of their general fund? How much are residents being taxed in order to pay for social services? Many of the communities you're comparing to do not have substantial social services or direct services by the city government. So you don't have a large, low, moderate income in there. Also, we fund a lot of not-for-profits out of the general budget through the mental health board. Those other cities do not do that. So you're, comparing, you're trying to compare apples to apples and you're not comparing apples to apples. Additionally, those communities do not have substantial or any community development block grant areas. They don't receive funding. When a community receives CDBG money, it means that they have substantial low and moderate income residents that we have to take into account. 
Elected officials should look at the budget overall and look at taxes overall. Who are we hurting? Where can we help? Where, what services do you do? Yes and no. Unfortunately, what I've seen from the library board is you aren't weighing that. You're just weighing the library. What do we want to do for the library? And that's what makes me so upset about this is that people are making decisions that have master's degrees and professional degrees and bachelor's degrees and have a lot of money and people in this community do not. So I'm well aware that you're going to get the votes. The library board, you're going to have the, most of the council members are, are going to concur with the library board and use their elected part the home rule to give you that extra money that is above the state statute. I am saddened by that that, that the Many of the people on this council, uh, there's I think five of us, maybe four of us, five of us actually, that have CDBG portions of the community. And why all five of us do not understand that it's an issue is really, really sad. So there's no point that the library, there's no discussion the library does good work. Why can't they do it with the state statute limit? Why do they have to ask for more? Why do they have to stuff their own purse and not understand that it's hurting other people in the community? Thank you, Alderman Ray. Well, first of all, there was a one comment made here tonight about a program or a project conducted at the library that I don't 100% support and want to 100% vote to finance. The library's doing great work. It should continue doing great work with an incremental increase. This year is not the year to ask for an additional $800,000. Some people have um, a very narrow focus on economic development Libraries are economic development, so are bars, so are restaurants, so are patios that bring more people into the community. As a matter of fact, one of the most interesting things that I thought up tonight after listening to some of the um, arguments is that sadly, or on the other hand, I'm grateful the police outpost has outlived its usefulness. It is no longer needed for social service, taking care of people, uh, rampant crime. About 13 years ago, the south end of town was virtually under siege. It was a disgusting, crime-infested place. Over the last 10, 12 years, it has found itself. It is a safe, wonderful place to live, and as a matter of fact, we've even lost a little of our CDBG area. So people are, people are really starting to um, make it in the south end of town. We are no longer going to accept being the warehouse for the poor and the criminals, et cetera. Um, it's a happy place. As a matter of fact, some of the most recent, well, over the last two years, I would say, um, meetings that have been held in the outpost to, let's say, do neighborhood watch or um, employment job, uh, job readiness, one or two people come. And sometimes I'm one of the one or two people, so. Um, and so is Michelle Hayes, one of the one or two people. So it's really outlived its usefulness. Any economic development that occurs on Howard Street adds to the revenues of the library. You have to expand the tax base. That's how, that's how you generate additional taxes without pinching the people more. So that's, that's a big plus. I, I'm so thrilled that we had somebody come to us and say, we, we'd like to uh, put an establishment which we're not uh, announcing yet, in the outpost. And we said, fine, please do not need, it's the most wasted space in the city of Evanston. So having said that, let's talk about some of the services that are offered at the library that are so fabulous. 
they're being provided by agencies that others fund. And that's a good thing. As long as the library has space, we should provide as much opportunity to services available in the community that get grants from other places um, that we can. I, I absolutely no problem with that. The library has no business asking for a 15% increase over last year and uh, I, I think it's five, it, well, it's $800,000 total. They need to pare it down. I asked them to pare it down. I asked about revenue. I was told one of the problems, um, the director told me one of the problems is they're not so sure they're gonna get a certain amount of money from a regular grant that they receive from the state every year. Well, you know, none of us are sure of that. I think the increase should be incremental. I'm not supporting the 5% water, the 10% water increase. I think that's a horribly uh, regressive tax. And, and this is no better, really. You know, you can, you can say how, how wonderful it is to serve poor people, et cetera, but the very poor people you're serving are gonna get hit by the increase. You can say every single time we have a budget discussion, it's only $25 uh, per year per this, $100 per year for this. Year after year after year, the cumulative effect is devastating. $2 this year a month, no. But when you add all the cumulative $2, $25, $50, $5 for water, $10, it all adds up. And eventually, it really breaks the back of the middle income people. It breaks the back. When your average two bedroom apartment rents in this town for over $1,500, give me a break. That is a very difficult road to hoe. And every time the water rate goes up, anybody who's renting, their, their rent's gonna go up. That's all there is to it. It's very, very difficult. So I, I, I support the library's programs, absolutely. They are taking advantage. They told us when this separation took place that it would not be an increase. Several of us asked, absolutely no increase. No, this will not mean an increase in the budget regular incremental increases that everybody needs, fine. Our departments have been asked for a 3% cut. The library's asking for a 15% increase. It's wrong, it's wrong. And you can, you know, you can use words like bullying and poisoning in your introduction, but it, it doesn't affect me at all. What affects me is that we're gonna ask the public for this kind of increase. And I think this council, I disagree with you, I think this council is not gonna do that. Uh, thank you, Alderman Grover. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I move uh, our adoption of tax levy ordinance 135014, which levies the annual property tax for the Evanston Public Library. This is an ordinance that was introduced more than a month ago on October 25th. Thank you, it's been moved and seconded, Alderman Wilson. Thank you, and uh, Alderman Grover, I support your motion. Yes, it's true. This is an amount greater than what the library can make us do. And that's a decision we have to make. It's up to us. And I'm prepared to make that decision. I'm looking at what are the services being provided. Uh, it's not so much a question of the percentage increase. It is who's going to get the benefit of this. And I feel like this is an appropriate expenditure based on the budgeting that they've done. I feel like it's, an, it's a responsible budget. And, um, you know, the, the idea that, um, well, and that, that's it. I, I, I support this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no lights for further discussion, I would say that I, too, support the library's request. <coughs> City Clerk, would you call the roll? Autumn Wilson. Aye. Autumn Holmes. Aye. Autumn Tindem. Aye. Autumn Grover. Aye. Autumn Rainey. No. Autumn Burris. No. Autumn Fisk. Aye. Autumn Braithwaite, <laughs> Autumn Wynn. Aye. Seven to two. Seven to two, the motion passes. <laughs> Next is SP2, Ordinance 147014, granting a special use for a type two restaurant, Domino's Pizza at 911 Foster Street. Move approval. 
been moved and seconded to approve ordinance 147014. Um, Alderman Fisk, did you want to speak to this? Uh, yes, I did, Madam Mayor. Um, I just want to say good, good night to Mr. Schiff. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Um, I, I had, I had uh, voted against suspending the rules on this in order to give um, the neighbors a chance uh, to meet with the, um, uh, the business owner and discuss their concerns. Unfortunately, uh, that did not happen because of the Thanksgiving holiday. I did get a telephone call today from uh, the owner asking if I'd like to invite a couple of people this afternoon. I was in meetings most of the day, was not able to do that. Um, my, my, my feeling about suspension of the rules is that I can support suspension of the rules when there is no citizen dissent. But when there is, I think our citizens expect the two-week the two week, um, delay between introduction and action. And I think that if there isn't um, any objection, that's fine. We'll go ahead and suspend the rules on the uh, recommendation of the ward alderman. But in this case, I couldn't do that. I had su substantial um, concern from folks in my ward about delivery service late at night. And on that basis, I asked for more time. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get it. Tomorrow's our ward meeting. and. Um, the vote will happen tonight. So, but I will continue to um, to speak out against suspension of the rules, in any case in which uh, citizens actually have not had um, uh, or need more time to, uh, and an opportunity to meet and and uh, address the issues. Thank you, Alderman Holmes. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and to Alderman Fisk and to the rest of the Aldermen, I'd just like to say that when there is controversy uh, about an item in another ward, if you would uh, let us know, and also if we let the citizens in another ward know uh, about meetings beforehand, like the zoning meeting would have been the perfect place for them to come and express those kind of concerns, I'm happy to always try to do things like that. So if we could do that, I, um, after the last week's meeting, I received several emails, which I did forward on to the mayor and to um, the city manager and to um, our community development uh, director to just let them know that people in the ward are in my ward where it's going to be located are, you know, are certainly in support of it. So that's why we needed to push it. We also know that the owner has put substantial money into it and it's very important that they move ahead, so that's why we wanted to suspend the rules. We wanted to suspend them so they could start to bring more money into our community. Thank you. Seeing no lights for further discussion, uh, City Clerk, would you call the roll on Ordinance 147014, granting a special use for a Type 2 restaurant, Domino's Pizza? Alderman Wilson? Aye. Alderman Holmes? Aye. Alderman Tindam? Aye. Alderman Grover? Aye. Alderman Rainey? Aye. Alderman Burris? Autumn Fisk, Autumn Braithway, Autumn Wynn. Eight to one. Eight to one, the motion passes. Uh, that completes our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? <coughs> well, it's not on the agenda. You want to call other wards? All right, would you? Yes, you may. Anything about my ward? I was very concerned tonight about. Um, comments that I heard from several speakers, and that is that our social service agencies that we fund, I think, in a generous way, are not uh, the first stop for some very needy people. In fact, the implication was they're really not the first stop for anybody, hardly. And so I'd like us to um, communicate with the agencies that we fund and find out what's going on. Why Why are they not the first? Uh, it seems to me that one speaker tonight said that a lot of the library services aren't known by people in the <coughs> community and others said that it's the first stop that the most needy <coughs> make in order to get social service. And that, that really concerns me because when we speak to them um, in terms of funding them and reading their proposals, their argument is that they're overwhelmed and flooded with people coming for services. And they frequently don't get enough money to serve everybody. So I would like our city manager, Yvonne Thomas, et cetera, who's ever uh, 
responsibility that would be to look into that and get back to us on that. Okay. I mean, I, statements made tonight, I, I trust were responsible ones and... Um, and, and, and Madam Mayor, Alderman <laughs> Rainey, uh, yeah. as I think we have come before the council on a couple different occasions over the past few months, uh, this is an ongoing dialogue. And I think that there are still uh, disconnects in the community among all the services we provide. I think the discussion that the Human Services Committee has had uh, with the Mental Health Board uh, is a part of that, and staff continues to have that discussion. I think it would be appropriate, Madam Mayor, to come back uh, with a report on our ongoing efforts to perhaps the full council maybe sometime in the early spring, uh, and we can incorporate Alderman Rainey's concerns into that discussion. Now, what, what I want are the facts. I, I, I don't want to have a dialogue. I just want to know, <laughs> is, this, is this really happening? Are people really not getting served in the way they should be by our social service agencies? Have they, it seems to me that they've been reaching out, I, but I And I think not the answer is yes, that, 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 that there is so much need in our community coming from so many different areas uh, that really your city staff is trying to work with our partners in these nonprofit groups to connect as many dots as possible. But I think I can say from my discussions with these organizations that yes, there are people who are still not being served and we have to work that much harder to make sure everyone has advantages to those service. Well, maybe then you can get us some advice as to how we handle proposals from these agencies who say they are serving if they're not really serving. And I think all of the remaining members of the, of the council that, uh, again, that dialogue is continuing and uh, will continue into the new year. So, I guess I'm not getting it. So, you'll get back to yes. when you have the answer. I answers. know more about dogs than you know. <laughs> Alderman Fisk. Uh, Madam Mayor, are we having um, call of the wards or not? Uh, no, it's, it's, it's not, not on the agenda. Actually, may I make an announcement then? Yes. Um, for a anyone who did not get the notice, unfortunately, there was a glitch about uh, uh, sending out the notices for the first ward meeting tomorrow night. So first ward meeting is tomorrow night, 7 to 9 p.m. at, thank you very much, the library. Yeah. See you then. Thank you. Does anyone else need to make an announcement? All right, we are adjourned. Alderman Verse, when do you want to start? 7.45. Oh. <coughs>